That's so smelly. That's really bad. Give me a second. Okay. AOA, welcome to another episode of PNN. Wherever you call home, we hope you're safe, doing well. We hope you're distancing and that you haven't run out of toilet paper. But, by the way, if you have, there's an app for that. It's called Our Streets. Look it up. An app that helps you locate toilet paper. I can't even believe that's a true story, but it is. It was amazing to hear from so many of you following our first episode. We had a really, really positive response. Comments came in from all over. One international boarding student said, I miss AOA like crazy, and PNN helped me feel like I was back on campus. A middle school student echoed that sentiment saying, I really needed to smile about something, and PNN helped me grin ear to ear. And lastly, a fourth grader asked, how come you couldn't make that trick shot, Mr. McNeven? I thought you were the athletic director. Listen, I tried, okay? I, I, tried, a, I tried so many times. That guy made it look easy. And I'm just, I'm just bad at golf. As we all develop a new normal, figuring out our teaching, learning, and working from home, I think it's okay to admit that, similar to golf, this is hard. Many students are out there struggling with motivation. There's increased anxiety and frustration. Sometimes all of us feel like things are just really, really heavy. Well, let's pause, breathe, and lighten things up for you with some good news. For starters, we had some good news right here in the AOA family. Second grader Taylor McFadden decided to enter the State Highway Patrol of Ohio coloring contest to honor National Pet Day. And she won! Her awesome drawing of these police dogs was voted best second grade entry. Congratulations, Taylor. We're really proud of you. Speaking of four-legged friends, Many people during this challenging time are finding joy and comfort in their pets. In Hazel Park, Michigan, that is certainly true for Ben Campbell and his Yorkie Thomas. Grumpy because he couldn't find a pair of giant fake teeth he just received as a gag gift, it was Thomas to the rescue, turning that frown upside down. Thomas, what are you doing? Thomas! <laughs> Hey, buddy, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. Now that is funny. The teeth <laughs> with the dog. That's good. In San Juan del Monte, Philippines, a Pizza Hut delivery driver named Raymond Papalero was questioned after buying 300 pieces of bread from a local bakery every day last week. As it turns out, Raymond who had once been homeless himself as a child, was using his own tip money to purchase the bread and distribute it to the homeless near his neighborhood. To make this story even sweeter, Pizza Hut found out and what did they do? They cut Raymond a $10,000 check in Philippine pesos to help continue the cause. And lastly, well, this. Just this. Now that I might watch every morning 
for the rest of my life. If not entertaining ourselves with pets or babies belly laughing uncontrollably, many are spending time catching up on movies, new and old. Here with us this week to review the Disney and Pixar film Onward is our very own upper school dean of students, Mr. Morozik, with a little segment we're calling Morozik at the Movies. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Morozik at the Movies. Movie reviews in 60-ish seconds. I'm your host, Mr. Morozik. Today's movie is Disney and Pixar's Onward. Onward stars Tom Holland and Chris Pratt as elf brothers Ian and Barley Lightfoot, who must find the mysterious Phoenix Stone in order to bring back their deceased father. After Ian uses a magical staff to cast a spell left by their dad 16 years prior, only his bottom half appears and the brothers must go on a thrilling quest to complete the spell to bring him back. On the trip, they experience peril and danger, including a car chase with angry pixies. They even go up against a fire-breathing dragon, and this movie is filled with lots of action, adventure, and magic. Now, I don't want to give away too much of the movie because I want you to go watch it right now. But on the patented Morozik at the Movies feels meter, Disney and Pixar's Onward gives you all the feels. I know I got a little bit teary-eyed watching the ending myself with my kids. Uh, if you like this and you want to see more 60-second-ish movie reviews, please follow at Mr. Underscore Morozik Underscore AOA, and I'll send it back to Mr. McNeven at the Phoenix News Network Studios. Adios. Thanks, Mr. Morozik. I'll be adding Onward to my queue this weekend. Do you know what day it is? No. I mean, I know. I... I realize actually nobody's keeping track of what day it is anymore, but it's Earth Day. Yeah, today is Earth Day. A time for all of us to, even stuck at home, think about how we can better take care of our planet. We've put together some Earth Day fun facts to consider, as well as some ways you can participate as a family from home. Earth Day turns 50 today. That's right. The first event of its kind was organized in 1970 when Senator Gaylord Nelson from Wisconsin and Congressman Pete McCloskey harnessed the growing energy of college students nationwide gaining national media attention for the movement. Approximately 20 million Americans participated that first year. Today, over 1 billion individuals across the globe in 190 countries Mobilize annually on April 22nd each year. You might be thinking to yourself, in the spirit of Earth Day, what can I do every day that might make a difference? Well, for starters, how about cutting out some plastic from your life? Do you know that most plastics take up to 1,000 years to decompose in our landfills? And most were only used once. Think about filling up that reusable water bottle. It's worth it. You might also consider taking control over the amount of snail mail you receive. Think about all those unwanted catalogs and paper ads. Those kill a lot of trees. Check out the app Paper Karma. It can clean up your mailbox right from your smartphone. For more Earth Day ideas and suggestions, we encourage you to visit earthday.org. There's all sorts of cool information on there. Do yourself a favor. Check it out. You know what else we encourage you to do? The Family Lockdown Boogie. That's going to make way more sense at the end. For sports lovers far and wide, this has been a completely bizarre time. Every sport, every league, every race paused. Well, maybe not every league. Joining us now is AOA 8th grader and PNN sports reporter, Darius Somrak. Darius, I understand you have quite an interesting race to cover for us today. 
That's right, Mr. McNeven. I'm coming to you live from the Wiener Dog Racing Circuit, where today's matchup is between fan favorite Crusoe and upstart challenger Oakley. This is going to be a fantastic race. Both of them approaching their cars. They are both ready to put the pedal to the metal. And approaching the starting line, this looks like it's going to be an amazing race. I mean, it's a great day for racing. Both of them have even stats, and they're off! Speeding down the track, a Crusoe comes out with an early lead. Oh, and it looks like Oakley pulling out in front of him with exhilarating speed. This is a heartbreaking turn of events for Crusoe. And what's this? It looks like Oakley has been distracted by a chicken to go. And with this, Crusoe takes the lead. He's speeding down the track, approaching the, start, the finish line. It looks like he might win this. And he crosses, he crosses the finish line. Oh my goodness, he's won it. And with a heartbreaking loss from Oakley, Crusoe takes his place as the king of wiener dog racing. That was PNN sports reporter Darius Somrak, everybody. Nicely done, sir. I mean, personally, I, I had all my money on Oakley. So maybe a bad day for me, but um, it's been a nice job. Last week, we asked you, the AOA community, to send us your best cartwheel submissions, and you did not disappoint. We received submissions from students in every division, faculty, and even parents. AOA, feast your eyes on this pure, unadulterated cartwheel magic. Phoenix News Network! What? <laughs> Can you get off? <laughs> <laughs> what, my, what try? Third try. Going on take, I think, seven. Can you stay on the black line? One. Of course, Mr. Fox, Mr. Swartz, cartwheel challenge. Three, two, one. Cartwheel. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dirty already. Hello, Mrs. Colbago here. I'm going to do a cartwheel for you. We want you to know that zero hospital visits resulted from those cartwheels, although we haven't seen Dr. Goodman since, so if you see him, uh, maybe send us an email. Uh, we're starting to get worried. And now, for this episode's AOA interviews, uncut. We've invited three special guests to join us today. Let's welcome in our very own... Division directors. 
Mr. Aarons, Mrs. Thompson, and Mrs. Frisbee. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking some time. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, I haven't seen you forever, and I feel like you've just been dodging me. So what have you, what have you guys even been doing? Uh, I've been working around the house and trying to teach these kids and help the faculty, but I, I've been doing a lot of chores around the house, that's for sure. I've, I've been doing a ton of cooking, and um, I've also been visiting all the class Zooms and seeing all the public speaking that the lower school students are doing on their class Zooms and um, just seeing their faces the only way I can. Um, and I have been Zooming um, and then also teaching students in my class and um, helping advisory, my advisory students and teachers and trying to help my kids work through school too from home. You guys have been doing a lot, so we do appreciate your time. Okay, here's the format. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do a little around the horn session. First question, let's see a little bit as if you reflect on uh, maybe what you miss. Mrs. Frisbee, what are the three things you miss the most about just regular old AOA life? Um, I think first and foremost, I miss greeting the students in the morning. From the very first day of school, I stand outside by the car rider drop off and I say good morning to everybody and get to ask them questions or see how they are in the morning. And then when it gets colder, because I'm such a freeze baby, um, I do that outside my office, but every day I, I'm out there and that's my favorite thing to do. And I really, really miss that. Um, I also miss my daily conversations with my teachers. They stop in my office and they share funny stories with me. They ask me to help them solve problems. Um, they talk to me about their families, everything. And I just really miss my teachers. Um, and finally, um, I think this year was something special that we started with uh, fifth grade students. We started playing um, board games and card games at recess for whoever wanted to join us. And I really, really was enjoying that. Um, I've continued that at home with my kids. We've been playing card games and board games every night, but I really miss doing it with the fifth graders, especially since they're moving on to middle school. And that was really my last chance to spend time with them. So I, I miss that. So uh, fifth graders, I really, really miss you. I'm sure they miss you as well. Mrs. Thompson, what about you? Three things you miss from the good old days of AOA regular life. First, I miss my students. It is so difficult just to get emails from them and not be able to see their faces or joke with them in classes and things like that. Um, I think we've all kind of felt the difficulty of just sending emails and messages. And I think a lot of us miss that um, connection. So I miss connection with them. Um, also, my colleagues and the middle school team, they are um, really fantastic to work with, and they have been, and I get to see them and Zoom with them all the time. Um, but I miss hanging out with them and having lunch with them. Um, they're my friends too, and so um, I'm missing that. And I think most of all, I'm just missing um, the spontaneity and like the funny things that just happen around. Um, if a kid cracks a joke and you happen to walk up or, um, you know, I, maybe I trip on the stairs, you know, all these things that kind of just happen that spice life, um, they don't really happen as often when you're just home. So I miss that. There's nothing spontaneous that happens in middle school. <laughs> Never. <laughs> All right, Mr. A, what about you? What do you miss from the upper school regular um, AOA life? I, I would agree with a lot with what Mrs. Frisbee and Mrs. Thompson said. Um, I would say probably my, I miss my homeroom every morning uh, coming in at eight o'clock, having my homeroom kids just, we have a lot of fun. We, um, we joke around a lot, do a little of the business that we need to at the beginning of the day, but then we really do just Celebrate each other, uh, celebrate each other's birthday, the half birthdays, um, eat breakfast together a lot of times, uh, but it's just a great way to kick off the day. So I really miss my homeroom kids, my advisory group every morning. Uh, I also miss the faculty, like what Mrs. Frisbee and Mrs. Thompson both said. Uh, we're, we're all friends. We enjoy each other's company. I like talking to them. I miss when they come in my office. I miss going into the classroom, stopping in, in the hall and just checking out what's on. But probably the thing that I miss the most is is seeing everyone interact at lunch. I love upper school lunch and the fact that you see 200 plus students from all around the world, um, 20, 30 faculty members, and we all just, we get along, we, we eat lunch together, joke, laugh, 
see how everyone's doing. So probably lunch is the one thing that I miss the most. Um, just seeing everyone interact together. Awesome, thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's change it up a little bit. Uh, this week's submission was cartwheels and we got some really good stuff. Um, but let's focus on you for a second. How many cartwheels, Mrs. Frisbee, back in your prime, could you do consecutively? Go. 30 or 40 when I was young, for sure, because I was really into gymnastics, although I couldn't bend my back. My back was not flexible, so that was the end of that. But cartwheels, I could do. 30 or 40, impressive. What about wow. you, Mrs. Thompson? <laughs> um, I'm gonna undershoot that and say maybe 10. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Mr. A? Uh, well, I was in my prime a long time ago, but I would say probably 100, give or take 99, either way. Yeah, um, yeah probably more on the single digit side. <laughs> yard, back and forth, just all day. That's all I do, just flipping back and forth. That's all I did, yeah. Uh, three or four, maybe, and none of them were ever be pretty. You know, it's easier when you're short, like, Cartwheels are really easy when you're big and tall. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm like a redwood tree just tumbling down a hill. It's not pretty. <laughs> I learned that from watching some of the submissions. It's all about that low center, <laughs> low center of gravity. All right, last question before we go to our big uh, Earth Day quiz round. Um, when was the last time each of you wore real clothes? Be honest. So for me, it was definitely Thursday, the last day of school before the Friday, the last day of school when I had school clothes on <laughs> every single day since then it's been yoga pants and aoa spirit wear and i have enough spirit wear to last me for two weeks before i have to wash it every day is friday uh -huh. <laughs> i wear a real shirt and then that yoga pants count. bottoms that does, that does not count <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, go ahead and say probably the last day of school <laughs> that, is, that is honest i was gonna say you're lying if you didn't say that uh, same for me, the last day of school, that, uh, that March 13th, it was, uh, yeah, I uh, wear a shirt a lot of times during the day for meetings, and uh, I have on Adidas sweatpants right now. Yep, very casual on the bottom. I don't blame you one bit. I think everybody's there. <laughs> what do you have on below that tie? Let me ask you that. I, well, I wear a full suit every day. You know, I'm very <laughs> <laughs> um, Just help me stay in the zone. Uh, okay, let's move on to our, our Earth Day competitive round. Do you guys have your cards ready? Are you ready for this? First question, Earth Day theme. This item can be composted and turned into natural fertilizer for your garden. Is it A, golf balls, B, eggshells, or C, aluminum foil? All right, correct answer was eggshells. Upper school and middle school take the lead. So I argue with that because I actually compost at home and they say do not compost eggshells. Well, I'm sure you're right, but for the I sake of the answers. Don't compost them either, so I almost chose golf balls. But <laughs> you're not supposed to. I will provide you with the research on that. You're not supposed to do that. I thought it was a trick question. I want to see your sources. I want to see your sources. <laughs> We're sticking with the standings right now. All right, middle school, upper school with one. Question number two. What uses the most energy in U.S. homes each year? A, lighting the house. B, heating and air conditioning. Or C, refrigeration. Roll them up when you're ready. Correct answer is heating and air conditioning. Ah. <laughs> Over school and middle school get one, which means middle school is in the lead. All right, question number three. Which of these species is threatened by global warming? A, koala bears. B, cute little clownfish. C, arctic foxes. D, great Canadian yellow-tipped Yeti llamas. Or oh, what? E, <laughs> what? C through C. E was just A through C. Correct answer is E, A through C. The first three are all impacted. So Mrs. Frisbee evens the score. All right, question number four. 
Ah, come on. What is most frequently discovered during beach cleanup days? Is it A, glass, B, shoes, C, pieces of plastic, or D, the meaning of life? <laughs> Correct answer is plastic. Everybody gets one. The standings remain the same. We got a lower school with three, middle school with three, and upper school with two. We're down to the final question. It's a lot of pressure here, you guys. All right. The average American generates this many pounds of garbage per day. Is it A, two pounds, B, three pounds, C, four pounds, or D, five pounds. Correct answer is four pounds. That's one for upper school, one for lower school, and it shouldn't be a shock to anyone. No one is smarter than fifth graders. No one is smarter than the lower school people. <laughs> the lower school is taking it. There's really no prize, it's just bragging rights. Mrs. Frisbee, you can- I will use it. those. I will use those bragging rights all I can. hold that over your colleagues. <laughs> <they're nervous. laughs> uh, thank you so much, you guys, for joining us tonight. You're very busy. We wanna thank you for all you're doing for our students and helping our faculty and families. And um, we hope to see you soon. Special thanks to Mrs. Frisbee, Mrs. Thompson, and Mr. Ahrens for taking a time out to join us on PNN. In all seriousness, they, along with all of our awesome AOA faculty, are working tirelessly to do their very best for you during this time away. Big shout out to the entire AOA faculty and staff. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you soon. Last week, we also asked for your help designing an official PNN logo. And once again, you stepped up to the plate. We met for hours and hours about this and just could not decide on a winner. Let's take a look at the impressive entries. to come, we'll review these entries and make a selection for the official PNN logo, using the only method that is truly, truly fair. Rock, paper, scissors. Stay tuned. And now, next week's themes. For episode three, we're asking you, the AOA community, for help giving us content in two specific areas. Number one good news. That's right. Any good news from your world. It could be an achievement, something you read about, watched, heard about, or noticed in your family or neighborhood. Any good news will do. Be our eyes and ears, AOA. Send in what you find. We need as much good news as possible right now. Number two, pets. They're adorable most of the time. Send us images and videos of your family pets that you want to share. Come on, you can do it. Catch them being clever, silly, lazy, clumsy, funny, or just super cute. We'll take it all. Don't forget, all good news and pet submissions should be emailed directly to our exclusive PNN address, aonews at andrewsosborne.org by Sunday at midnight. AOA, that's all for this week. We miss you. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you right back here 
on PNN. This one goes out to anyone who's on coronavirus lockdown with their immediate family. This is the family lockdown boogie. We're stuck here in the house for the next four weeks or so. And we won't be going out because the government said no. Just my mother and my father and my sister and me and little Maisie too. So for the family sanity, can't you see what we must do? Hey, Graham. Yeah. Do you want to move? I want to move. Hey, hey, Joe. Yo. Can you feel the groove? I feel the groove, yeah. Hey, Lonnie. What's up? Do you want to take a chance? Oh, yeah. The family's together, so let's just dance. Lock the door, hit the floor. It's the family lockdown boogie. Incarcerated, blood related. Family lockdown boogie. Dancing queen in quarantine. Family lockdown boogie. We can't go out, so we're all about Family Lockdown Boogie What a treat it is to be locked down with these three Because we can't get on each other's nerves if we're dancing constantly We're staying strong and getting along Cause that's just how we do Won't let this virus divide us So try this with your family too The streets are empty and the doors are locked We've got time on plenty and the fridge is stocked We're a nuclear family and we know how to rock So lock it down and turn it up right now You don't need to stop Lock the door, hit the floor It's the family lockdown boogie Incarcerated, blood related Family lockdown boogie Dancing queen in quarantine Family lockdown boogie We can't go out so we're all about Family lockdown